Hello everybody, my name is Ilya. And my name is Tyler. Together we make up Kavre, a couple that loves to play board games. And today we'll be teaching you how to play French Quarter. French Quarter! This game is another addition to the loaded roll and rights. And it's designed by Matt Riddle, Ben Pinchback, and Adam Hill. The game is published by Motor City Gameworks, who helped sponsor this video. Now in French Quarter, you're visiting New Orleans on a fine Saturday and you're trying to make the most out of the eight hours that you are there. Will you check out the food, the culture, some mystic customs, the shopping, or just the vibrant nightlife? There's many performers, there's also the infamous second line. Ooh. So there's lots to do. But let's jump on over to the table and show you how to play the game. As always, you'll begin by setting up. You'll sort the action cards by type into six decks. Shuffle each deck and place them face down in the center of the table. In a two-player game, you'll not be using the taxi deck. The dice pool is then prepared based on the number of players playing. Each player will receive a complete score sheet, one sheet from each pad, a player marker, and a pencil. You'll place your player marker on the Alma House Hotel on your map. This will be the starting position for each player. One player will then roll a die to determine the starting point of the second line. Each player will circle the matching intersection on the map. You'll choose a first player and you're now ready to play. French Quarter is played over eight rounds, each consisting of four phases. Let's go over them. Each round will kick off with the planning phase. You'll reveal the top card of each deck and place it face up next to that deck. The current first player then rolls the entire dice pool and places each die on the revealed card of the same color. It is now the travel phase. In this phase, players will take turns choosing dice from the card bro. The current first player will go first. They'll choose a die and the associated card and take the following four actions in order. Card action, movement action, building action, and map action. Card action. Each card shows one or two icons. In this step, you'll resolve the icons shown on your chosen card in order, left to right. Many of these will be activity icons. For each activity icon, you'll mark the next empty box in the associated track. You may come across a star icon. This is the wild activity icon. You'll have the opportunity to choose which activity track you'd like to mark. While progressing on the activity tracks, you'll unlock in-game bonuses as well as score multipliers. Anytime you mark off a space with an associated icon, you'll mark either the leftmost bonus or the topmost score multiplier. Some spaces will grant you a choice between the two. In-game bonuses vary throughout the activities, and some can even have negative impacts on your game. You'll have to plan and choose wisely in order to maximize your strategy. Bonuses include mapping buildings throughout the map, gaining a bonus umbrella anytime you get an umbrella icon, starting your own personal second line, and much more. The other icon you will see is the umbrella. For an umbrella icon, you'll mark the next empty box of the umbrella track. Every third box will earn you a wild activity icon. The second step is the movement action. You'll now complete the movement of your chosen card. Each card lists a specific transportation method. Here you'll move your tourist to another building space on the map that's reachable based on your transportation method. Your tourist must move to a different building. When counting spaces, you may not move diagonally, and each building small or large is considered a space. Many cards will allow you to move a specific number of spaces, while the streetcar and the riverboat will grant you the ability to move to any building on that specific street. Building action. In this step, you'll resolve any icons shown on the building you're visiting left to right. These will sometimes be activity or umbrella icons, which we've already discussed. In addition, you'll also have the opportunity to see performers. For each performer icon, you'll mark the topmost empty box of the associate performer type and then proceed by marking the leftmost box of the performer track, making sure to resolve any bonus icons marked along the way. Finally, some buildings will offer scoring effects instead of icons. At each courtyard, you'll mark the circle when you visit. Visiting multiple courtyards will grant you more points at the end of the game. At the Riverwalk Shopping and Aquarium, you'll mark the box on your first visit and the circle on your second visit. Visiting this location twice grants you points at the end of the game. Now last is the map action. In this step, you'll map the building you're visiting by writing the value of your chosen die in the square space of that building. When you map a building, the value of your chosen die must be equal to or within one of all values on adjacent buildings. 
buildings are adjacent if they're directly next to or across from each other. As an example, ones can be adjacent to ones and twos. Threes can be adjacent to two threes or fours. If you cannot map a building either because of the value or because you mapped the building previously, you'll gain an umbrella icon instead. And that's the four actions. The second phase will continue until everyone has taken two dice. One die will remain. You'll leave it in the card row and proceed to the third phase, second line phase. If the socialized die was chosen during the travel phase, the second line will advance. If not, you'll simply proceed to the fourth phase. Now in this case, a socialized die was taken. The player who chose the die will choose the direction they want the second line to advance, north, south, east, or west. Once they have chosen, they'll announce it to the table. Every player will then advance the second line in their own map one block in the direction announced. The first time the second line advances, it'll advance from the intersection that was circled during setup. After that, when the second line advances, it continues from the last intersection where it stopped. The second line is allowed to go down named and unnamed streets, and even the four edges of the map. It is not allowed to go down alleys between the pairs of small buildings. The other important rule of the second line is that it can only go where it has not been. This means that while the second line can intersect and cross other portions of itself, it cannot double back in itself. Once the second line advances, you'll count how many map buildings are touching the second line on your map, and mark an equal number of empty boxes on the second line track, left to right, one row at a time. You'll gain an umbrella icon when you mark the last box in each row on the second line track. Important thing to note here as well, each map building can be counted once for second line scoring, even if the second line touches the building on multiple sides. You're now ready for the last phase, cleanup phase. You'll pass the first player marker to the left, all the dice will return to the dice pool, and the next round will begin. You'll keep playing, taking actions, traveling, and exploring all that New Orleans has to offer until all eight rounds have been completed. At this point, the game ends and final scoring can begin. You'll first score each of your activities. For each activity, your score will be equal to the number of mapped buildings on the associated street multiplied by the highest unlocked score multiplier on that activity track. Let's do the food track together. There are eight map buildings and the highest unlocked multiplier is one. This means you'll score eight points. The food activity track also has bonus points you're able to earn. If you obtain the B bonus, you'll score one point for each small building you've mapped. Six in this case. Eight and six is 14. You'll write this value in the food section of your score track. You'll continue doing the same for the culture, shopping, mysticism, and partying tracks. Noting that the shopping track also has bonus points, you'll score one point per star on the umbrella track. You're now ready to score the second line. Your score for the second line is equal to the total number of boxes marked on the second line track. Buildings are next. You'll score points from courtyards, riverwalk shopping and aquarium, and gift shops. Last but certainly not least, you'll score performers. You'll score each of the two possible performer sets using the printed chart based on how many boxes you marked in that row. You'll also include any bonus points earned from the performer track here as well. You'll tally up the points, and the player with the most wins. Looking to expand your game? The game also contains a mayor variant where streets become inaccessible due to the mayor's visits. A tourism expansion, which provides you goals for buildings to visit. And of course, a solo mode is also included, as this is a one to four player game after all. Will your experience outshine all the other people that you decided to go to New Orleans with? It sure will. I walked a lot. Yeah. Well, if you have any questions around the game or if there's anything you want to know more about French Quarter, feel free to drop us a comment in the comments down below. This project is also coming to Kickstarter, so mm -hmm. make sure to hit that link to learn more about this game and all the wonderful games that Motor City Gameworks puts out. Exactly. Until next time, we will see you later. Bye! Bye.